My name is Doug Parker, host of the Cruise Radio Podcast, and this is a tour of Carnival Panorama. Before we get to the tour, if you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. So, Carnival Panorama was launched in 2019. She comes in at 133,500 gross registered tons, carries 4,008 guests, and is 1,055 feet long. As far as staterooms on board, there are 70 suites, 891 balconies, 254 ocean view rooms, and 789 interior cabins, bringing the cabin count to 2,004 cabins total. Now, you embark at Carnival Panorama on deck four, and you enter into the main atrium, but we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So deck one is all stateroom cabins, mostly interior and ocean view down on deck one. Up to deck two is where you'll find family harbor cabins. This is the area dedicated exclusively for families. Now, some of the cabins have split bathrooms in the family harbor area to make it easier to get ready for dinner and such. You'll also find those coveted cove balconies on this deck. These are the balconies that are inset a little bit from the outside elements, but still a, a balcony nonetheless, just like a picture a giant porthole. You'll also find other cove balconies on this deck that are not part of the family harbor staterooms. The family harbor guests, though, they're allowed to have access to the family harbor lounge. This is an area that is access controlled. There's video games, an ice cream machine, a breakfast buffet, and just a place for families and kids to chill. Again, this is access controlled, so only guests of Family Harbor can actually come inside the Family Harbor Lounge. Deck 3 is where the atrium starts. This is the heart of the ship and can be accessed from decks 3, 4, and 5. This is also the home to the shore excursions desk, guest relations, and one of the main dining rooms forward of the atrium. They're just staterooms up there. Um, you'll notice a lot of wood finish in this area. It seems like they are using slip-resistant flooring throughout the ship now. If you recall, on the previous two Vista-class ships, there was that white tile, and it was very slippery. So uh, maybe like a non-skid they're using here on Carnival Panorama. There are two main dining rooms on Carnival Panorama. There's the Vista dining dining room and the Horizon dining room. The Horizon dining room is the midship dining room and that's used for traditional dining, the set dining time, while the aft dining room, the Vista dining room, that's used for anytime dining and sea day brunch. The anytime dining room in the back of the ship, that is a two deck dining room and the midship dining room for traditional dining, that is just a one deck dining room. The chef's table is also located on deck three within the actual kitchen though, so or galley I guess. How it works on deck three is there's a dining room and then a kitchen and then a dining room. So these, there's one kitchen and then a dining room on each side of that kitchen and the chef's table experience is located right in the middle of that galley and guests actually get a first hand look at the galley and what goes on behind the scenes to look and see how the culinary team pumps out thousands of meals or dinners a night. It's, uh, it's pretty intriguing to have a meal in there. Really good, too. Wine pairings with each uh, course as well. Now, outside of the dining room and moving forward on deck four, you'll pass the Limelight Lounge. That's otherwise known as the Punchliner Comedy Club and Late Night Club or Disco. There isn't a bar in here, but there are plenty of servers roaming around to take your drink order. You'll want to get to the adults only only comedy show in this space early because it does fill up fast. They did move a couple of the late night comedy shows into the main theater, which made things easier and it wasn't as cramped in there because, boy, they pile in there to see those late night comedians. Now, just ahead of the comedy club is the art gallery, and then you have the Heroes Tribute Bar. This space is dedicated to the men and women of the armed forces with red, white, and blue theme throughout. Also a bar menu that gives a nod to the armed forces like the Army Navy and the Blue Angel drink. This also doubles as the sports bar with wall-to-wall -wall screens, also that sports ticker that shows up-to-date scores. So Skybox Sports Bar was in this place, and now it's the Heroes Tribute Bar. Coming up next is the casino, but tucked away behind the casino is Carnival Kitchen. This is where guests can learn how to cook like the Carnival Cruise Line chefs. This is a state-of-the-art culinary studio where each guest gets their own workstation led by an executive chef. It's a really cool spot in concept. Now, it does have an extra fee associated with it. 
It costs between $39 and $59 per person, depending on the class you're taking. Some classes actually have a sit-down meal, while others you're preparing the food that you can actually eat later. If you're wondering what this space was on Carnival Horizon and Vista, it was the Club O2 teen spot. Just ahead is a casino. You'll find plenty of slot machines and tables in here. And right in the middle of the casino, there's a big bar with a miniature version of the Dreamscape, that big LED centerpiece that's located in the main atrium. There's a miniature one located right in the middle of the casino. Now, guests are allowed to smoke in here. So if you're sensitive to smoke, you may want to use Deck 5 to navigate your way from the front to the back of the ship. Otherwise, just walk through the casino. The ventilation is pretty good in there, or at least it was on our sailing. Forward of the casino is the main atrium. That's where you'll find a fair share of the fun shops and duty-free shopping on this deck. This kind of hugs the main atrium uh, on both the port and starboard side. And then all the way forward is the very first deck of the Liquid Lounge or the main theater. If you want a good seat in here and you want to really be involved with this show, I suggest you sit on deck number four. There's both seating in the front, the port and starboard side in here, and it goes back pretty far. So you're, you're really going to have a good seat if you're down here on deck number four. In the very back of the liquid lounge on deck four, you'll find a full service bar. And then up on deck five, you'll find more seating in the theater. I'll also note on deck number five, there are some pole obstructions up here. So keep that in mind if you're coming in here for the Welcome Aboard show or a playlist production show um, or the late night comedy show that's held in the Liquid Lounge. Um, deck number five is probably not the best seating unless you're in the first rows up here. Coming out of the Liquid Lounge on Deck 5, you'll hit some more fun shops. There's a lot of shopping on this ship, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you'll also find Cherry on Top up here. That's the candy specialty store. There's also access to the Lanai through Cherry on Top out here. The Piano Bar is on your port side. It's called Piano Bar 88. This is your typical piano bar, and early in the night, there's actually a piano player playing like smooth music into the steakhouse. So there's a rollaway wall between the piano bar and Fahrenheit 555, the steakhouse, so you can actually hear the music as you're eating. A lot better than it was on Horizon. That was kind of a poor design the rollout was. Um, this was just really smooth, light piano playing. Now, just opposite is the library bar. You can chill out and read a book or play a board game. You can also access the outside lanai from the library bar, just like you can from Cherry on Top. Walking back, you'll come to Bonsai Teppanyaki. This is Carnival's Japanese steakhouse with good food and a lot of entertainment. That's connected to the sushi joint that's called Bonsai Sushi with plenty of sushi rolls, sashimi, soups, and salads. There's also an outside dining option at Bonsai Sushi. And just opposite of Bonsai Sushi is the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. This is an all-inclusive experience that costs $38 at the time of recording. If you're celebrating a special milestone, this is really the place to go. A lot of good food here, too. You have, like, the porterhouse. You have a filet. Uh, you have a surf and turf, which is the steak and lobster. Also dishes like lamb chops and chicken as well. So if you're not a seafood person, you have options in the steakhouse. And like Bonsai Sushi, you can also dine outside at Fahrenheit 555. Outside of the steakhouse, you can look down into the casino where that mini dreamscape is situated. That actually spans deck four and deck five. There's a glass partition between deck four and five, so you can look down into deck four as you're walking by. The Alchemy Bar is also situated out here. They're really mixing up your favorite drinks in here. Some favorites are the 40 is the new 20 and Cucumber Sunrise, both really good here. Or if you want to make a creation of your own, the Alchemists behind the bar can help you out. This is also one of those intersection points on the ship. So if you're looking for someone, chances are they're going to walk by here at some point. So maybe grab a drink and wait for someone to walk by if you can't find them or reach them on the chat app. Walking aft, you'll approach Pixels. That's the Photoshop. Carnival Panorama is a no-print ship when it comes to photos. So they print on demand, but no more of printing thousands of photos per cruise and just throwing them away. They also use facial recognition here. It's free to take pictures around the ship, so feel free to ham it up all cruise long and just buy the photos you want. Uh, there will be at least six spots to take photos every evening, and then those photos will show up on the app where you can see them or buy them. Up next is my personal favorite spot on Carnival Panorama. It's Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brew House. You'll find a brewery in here making different types of craft beers. Also a full-service bar here with Guy Fieri-inspired creations. Um, they have a really good Bloody Mary in here, a nice spicy one with a piece of candied bacon in it. So good. 
You have barbecue during the day that is complimentary for lunchtime with pork, beef, chicken, and sausage. And then at nighttime, this venue becomes a sit-down for fee venues. So it becomes a specialty restaurant at night. And you'll have like rib platters and brisket, grilled salmon, this massive sandwich called the hog that has almost the whole kitchen on it, and everything else that Guy Fieri is known for, mac and cheese, all that good stuff. Again, this place is complimentary for lunchtime with the outside barbecue buffet. And then for dinner time, it's all a la carte. Outside of the smokehouse is the Java Blue Cafe where you can get your morning caffeine fix or a donut. The donuts and cupcakes are extra, about $3 each out here. Um, you can also have a spiked coffee or a milkshake from here as well. And then you'll have Ocean Plaza, both on the port and starboard side at Ocean Plaza. There are doors to take you to the outside decks where you can walk both the port and starboard side of deck number five. Go all the way to the front of the ship. You can't go all the way to the back because that's where the Havana suites, the Havana cabins are. And those are access controlled. So if you have a Havana cabin, you can put your key card up and walk back there to the cabin from the outside. But otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the full loop if you're not staying in the Havana area. But inside the ship is Ocean Plaza, and that's the spot for the trivia, crafts, live music, dancing. They also do the Build-A-Bear workshop in here on a sea day. So a lot going on here inside of Ocean Plaza. And then the Ocean Plaza bar sits just off to the side, and that's both on the inside and outside on the starboard side right here on deck number five. Now, the Havana Bar in Retreat is located on the very back or the aft end of Deck 5. The Havana Bar is open to everyone, and it has a live band complete with a horn section, which is really cool. A live Latin band, I should say. It's also a quiet place by day, too, so if you want to play board games or read a book or just relax, this is a good spot, and it's nice and cool in here as well. Now, for the Havana Retreat, that is the area located just outside of the Havana Bar, and that's open to guests who are staying in the Havana Cabins, the Havana Suites. The Havana Retreat is really nice, though. There are two hot tubs back here, and there's one pool along with a bar. You'll also find loungers, just like on Serenity Deck, with clamshells, the day beds, the chairs. Again, this is only for the Havana guests. So non-Havana guests, they used to be able to access this area after 7 o'clock, but in November of 2019, they completely shut that down. Now, if you're not a Havana guest, you aren't getting back here. You're just enjoying it from afar. Up to deck number six is the Warehouse Arcade. Fun games in here, and I'm a little bit addicted to the coin pusher games. I like these coin pushers better than the ones at the casino, because at least in here, you can win tickets on these, whereas the casino, you're just losing quarters. I guess it's all relative, though, right? You'll also want to look for Power Hour. That's the one hour during the cruise where the arcade is 50% off. So anything you play is going to be 50% off. So you can play games for like, you know, 50 cents or 75 cents. You know, back how it was in the good old days. Just forward of the arcade is the teens area. Now, this isn't to be confused with the Camp Ocean, the Camp Carnival, which is located on an upper deck, deck 11. This is actually for the teens only. So there's Circle C, ages 12 to 14, and then there's Club O2, that's ages 15 to 17. Both areas are age appropriate. They have some gaming spots, the dance floor, and just places to chill out and hang. Now we go up to deck number seven. This is where Carnival said goodbye to IMAX and hello to Sky Zone. It's a trampoline park. And I thought this was going to be a little bit gimmicky when I first heard about it, but it may have been the best hour of my cruise. We did get to do the glow party in here and the one hour free jump. We played dodgeball, got to slam dunk basketballs. We even jousted, played a game of tug of war, um, tried to make our way up a rope ladder that was very unstable and also played on a rock climbing wall. So there's so much to do in this space. There is an extra charge to come in here, but totally worth it. The hour jump was $12 and the glow party is $18. Now, Deck 8 and Deck 9, they're just all staterooms. Deck number 10 is where you'll find the beach pool, the Lido Deck. That's surrounded by loungers, of course. And you have the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar up here on the port side and the Red Frog Rum Bar on the starboard side and also two Carnival food favorites, Guy's Burger Joint and the Blue Iguana Cantina, also located by the pool. Just behind the pool is the Lido Deck Marketplace. This is the buffet on Carnival. Typical selections up here, like a salad bar, a meat carving station, hot dishes. Uh, you have the Carnival Deli, a small and complimentary gelato stand with all the toppings. You have a dessert bar and, of course, those famous soft-serve ice cream machines.
On the very back of the ship is Pizzeria del Capitano. This is the 24-hour pizza joint. Late at night, this place is known to have a line building. The good thing is, though, they do offer delivery service either through room service or through an app. You can order it anywhere on the ship you want for $5. But just to be clear, if you order the pizza at Pizzeria del Capitano, stand in line and get your pizza. It is complimentary, but ordering it through the app to have it delivered anywhere on the ship or ordering it through room service is going to cost you $5. Also back here, you have the Seafood Shack, which is reminiscent of a New England-style seafood eatery. The food here is a la carte with items like shrimp baskets, crab legs, clam chowder, fresh shrimp, clam strips, all the, uh, the good stuff. Also had a really good lobster roll here, and something else is really good too. Oh, the buffalo shrimp were really good here as well. You could also find the second pool on Lido Deck back here, and it has two hot tubs around it. This spot really gives you a connection to the ocean because it's wide open, the pool is circled with loungers, and it's also home to the Tides Bar. That's a big oval bar back here on Deck 10 aft. Up to Deck 11, there is more seating that overlooks the aft pool. Also, the smoking area is out here on Deck 11 as well, starboard side. Uh, more smoking down on Deck 5, starboard side as well. Uh, inside Deck 11 is home to two more specialty restaurants on board. There's the Gigi's Asian Kitchen, an Asian fusion venue. It currently costs $15 per guest at dinner, but lunchtime, complimentary noodle and wok type dishes. If you're coming here for dinner, I highly recommend the glazed pork belly and Kung Pao chicken. So good. Across the hall is Cucina del Capitano. This is the Italian restaurant that's also $15 per guest and offers family-style Italian dining. During the daytime, you can get the lunch complimentary up here from 12 to 2.30. They call it the Captain's Pasta Bar with different dishes. You can get a full portion, a half portion, but uh, pack an appetite because there's a lot of food up here and you can really carve up. In fact, every time I leave this venue, I always go straight to my room if I'm having dinner here because they give you so much food and the garlic bread and little rolls they give you are just so good. So I can't resist. Sorry. Camp Ocean is also located on Deck 11 Midship. This is for kids ages 2 to 11. I didn't want to film this area because there were kids playing in here, but here are some photos of what the area looks like. Continuing with the Dr. Seuss theme, you'll also find the Seuss Bookville in Camp Ocean. Now, the hours do vary up here by day, so you'll want to check the reception area, get a list of the operation hours, also a schedule of activities for the week, all available right here at the front desk. Moving forward on Deck 11, this is the first tier that overlooks the Lido Deck in the pool area. This is the spot to claim if you want to hide from the sun but still enjoy that sea day breeze. Deck 12 forward is the two-deck Cloud 9 Spa and treatment rooms. On this deck, you'll find the fitness center all the way forward with your standard workout equipment up here. Also, a cycling studio attached to the fitness center. You'll also find the thermal suite here on this deck. That has the mineral jacuzzi, uh, the dry heat chambers, the steam rooms, and those warm relaxation chairs. I will say with this thermal suite, the passes do sell really quick. Now, you can buy them by the week or by the day, it's highly suggested that you purchase them when you book your cruise. If not when you book your cruise, once you get on board, because they only sell a limited number of thermal suite passes for the week here. It is capacity controlled. The Choose Fun Waterworks Park is also located on Deck 12. There are two twister slides here, a funnel-shaped dump bucket, and a kid's splash area. Now you actually enter the slide a couple of decks up, so you have a little bit of climbing to do before you, you know, make the plunge on the slide. On our sailing, it was a little too chilly for this Florida boy to get on the slide, but a lot of people were enjoying it. On deck 12, midship to aft, you'll find the clubhouse with oversized giant games like chess. You'll also have a golf course up here, jogging track where seven laps around is one mile. And right above you is the ropes course and the sky ride. Towards the back is the fitness equipment and then the sky court, a.k.a. the basketball court. One thing that is annoying, but there is only so much space on the ship, I realize, is that the basketball court is right above the two specialty restaurants, Gigi's Asian Kitchen and Cucina del Capitano. They do try to limit the hours of the basketball court to not be open when these specialty venues are serving guests. But, you know, I've been in there for dinner when people are playing basketball, and it is a little bit annoying. Deck 14 forward is the second deck of the spa with more treatment rooms and a salon offering services like pedicures, manicures, hairstyles, haircuts, and hot shaves. 
Deck 14 Midship is where you'll find the entrance to the Sky Ride and Sky Course. Both of these activities are included in the price of your cruise. The Sky Ride is really popular because you sit in this cart and you pedal your way around on a track hovering about 140 feet above sea level. And then the ropes course is just two challenges you can do. And those are fun too. Not for, if you have a fear of heights, you might not want to get on the ropes course, but it is really fun if you can kick the whole heights thing. As far as the weights go, I've seen Skyride have a 45 minute wait, and I've never seen the ropes course to have more than maybe a five minute wait. Do keep in mind though, you need to have closed toed shoes, so like sneakers on both of these. They do have lockers available for both Skyride and the ropes course. They are free to use. Um, and they also won't let you bring cell phones on either the ropes course or the Skyride. The final deck is the Serenity deck on deck 15. This is the adults only area that is at the very top of the ship forward. Carnival does enforce the 21 and up rule here. You'll find a lot of chill spots here. You'll have day beds, clamshells, chairs, some shaded areas. Also a couple of showers out here in two giant hot tubs, one on the port side and one on the starboard side. And of course, you also have the Serenity Bar. And then on sea days, they have the Creation Salad Bar up here where you pick your greens and your protein, tell the chef what you want, he'll whip you up a salad. This is the ultimate place to be on sea days. One thing I didn't mention at the beginning of the video is there are three banks of elevators on Carnival Panorama. There are eight elevators forward, there's four midship and there's four aft and all of these elevators are the new elevators. So you push what floor you're going to on the outside of the elevator and it assigns you to a certain elevator and you board that elevator. If you jump into any elevator, there's no telling where you're going to go. So make sure you push the button and go to your assigned elevator. All right, that'll do it for our tour of Carnival Panorama. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of the Cruise Radio podcast and the Daily Cruise Radio News Briefs. You can find both where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. You are the reason why I do make these videos. And let me know, what do you think of Carnival Panorama? It's the first brand new Carnival ship to debut on the West Coast in over 20 years. It's the very last build in the Carnival Vista class, and there are some cool new additions to it. Let me know in the comments below. Look forward to reading your thoughts, and thank you so much for watching.